Hello guys, Mukas here. Actually, hello Daybreak, it's Mukas. I love your game guys, but I think the leadership system is not up to par with the epicness of Planetside 2. So I made a big list of all the things that could improve the system and make it easier for leaders, because I think this is when, what makes the games the most fun, is when you have a nice leader that is funny, charismatic and uh, gets you into action. It's actually why I created my uh, outfit before I was just joining public platoons, but I got disappointed of the leadership. So now my outfit is 3 years old, I've been leading squads for uh, years now, I don't remember how many hours, but uh, that's a lot, and I enjoyed most of the time with it, but there is things that could definitely be improved, and I think this could unleash the potential of Planetside 2, when new leaders will start rising, this could bring a huge wave of teamwork and epicness. So this is why I beg you to consider making these changes. In no particular orders, there is so many points in the list that I couldn't uh, rank them. So let's start with the vehicle voice chat. I would like that there is a voice chat only for the vehicle you're in, because sometimes when people are in the squad and in a vehicle, they are cluttering the squad voice chat with, the, with their communication for the vehicles. For example, when they drive a harasser, they call out targets and uh, they call for repairs, and it's not always relevant for the squad chat. So I think we need a vehicle voice chat only for the people in the vehicles. So the squad chat can stay clear of any clutter. For now, the solution that people have found is to put every people in a vehicle in a different squad so they can talk to each other without bothering the other players in the platoon. I think it's a quite important problem because a lot of squad play re revolves around using vehicles like harassers, sunders and tanks. So next up on the list, the ability to create a squad alone. For now, the only way to create a squad is to invite another player and he has to accept and then you have a squad and you can place a beacon. But I think this is quite restricting for people that, for example, just joined the game. They would like to squad lead, but they don't know uh, anyone they could invite. I think it would be nice if they could create their squad alone, name it and uh, open it for the public. So, so we could see more squads led by lone wolves. I know many lone wolves that actually are very good players and that are willing to squad lead because they have a microphone and the experience. But the process of creating a squad and maintaining it is actually sometimes too, too complex and they just finish up playing alone. And this brings me to the next point that has been very annoying to me since years, is that when you invite someone to your squad, if they are already in a squad, they don't even get the notification. And I think this is very annoying, so you have to ask them to, to leave their squad and then you can send them the invitation. And this is extremely annoying because when you create a squad, you don't know which, which other player is in a squad or not. So you just have to try out with every invite. And this is making the process of creating a squad much more complicated than it should be. So I think when you send an invite, if they are already in a squad, they should have a notification to leave their squad and join the new one. And this will make life much easier for people creating squads. So next point is one of the most important one. Please rail. I think the 9 count should be displayed for every squad member on your HUD when you're a squad leader, so you know how much resources every squad member has. And this is crucial when leading a squad, when you ask someone to pull a vehicle or a max, you have to know if they have the resources. And with the current system, you cannot know, you have to ask them. And again, this is making the leadership much more complicated. So I think the nine at count should be displayed next to their names, like when they're in a vehicle. It doesn't need to be a precise indicator, it just has to say if they have low, uh, medium or high resources. This will make the leadership much more enjoyable, especially when you try to micromanage a squad. So the next point is also quite important, and it's the reason I don't lead platoons. I led squads for hundreds of hours, but I don't like to lead platoons, because you don't know anything about your platoon on your HUD. For example, when you squad lead, you know the status of all of your squad members. You know their name, if they're alive, if they have a vehicle, etc. But when you have a platoon, you only know the information of your current squad. And how can you lead a platoon without knowing even who is in it, uh, if they are alive or not? I think the HUD should display all the members of your platoon, like the people in your current squad, so you can give them much more specific orders. If you know there is 3 members in Bravo squad, you'll give much more different orders than if you know there is 12 members in Bravo squad. Right now, to know who is in your platoon, you have to go on the platoon screen to get the information, then you can go back to play. And this is not viable to lead platoons like that. The next point is to allow more tactical play when attacking bases. I would like that engineers can repair enemy destroyed terminals, so infiltrators can uh, hack them. So it gives more tactical options for the squad. For now, if you arrive in a base and the terminals are destroyed, you can do absolutely nothing to exploit them. I think this will make engineers much more important when attacking a base and trying to get tactical advantage. So next point is also related to terminals. 
I would like that engineers or any class could actually drop mini infantry ter terminals with limited use, something that would allow you to change your class, maybe uh, resupply your grenades for a few times, so it's not overpowered. Maybe you could be allowed to resupply your consumables five times before it disappears, or you can pull one max before the terminal disappears. I think this could be a nice way for squads to improve their versatility. This could make small squads play much more interesting if the players play together well. So next point is about the spawn beacon. I think squad leaders should be able to delegate this role to a squad member, the role of carrying the beacon and planting the beacon. Because planting a beacon often requires you to play light assault, to plant it in an elevated position and a more safe position, and leading a squad giving orders often requires you to change class. So I think this will allow squad leaders to be more free in their class selection, because they know that a squad member is taking the task of planting the beacon. Like when you ask someone to pull a thunderer, I think you should be able to ask someone to plant a beacon. The next point is about regrouping your squad. I really miss the squad deploy button, where you could drop on your squad leader once every few minutes. This option has now been removed, and I think it makes it more complicated to keep the squad together, especially when you're creating it and you try to get everyone together. Sometimes it's hard to, to, get, to spawn next to your squad leader if you're on the other edge of the map. So again, I think this would make squad leaders job much easier when they can just call the squad to regroup and they just have to press the squad deploy button to drop next to it. Of course, we should have a time restriction like a cooldown, three or four minutes, and this would make squad leaders jobs much easier. Nice, I'm gonna push blood. The next point is a bit related to spawning next to your squad, is that I'd love that they, they remove the, the distance restriction when spawning on beacons and squad vehicles. Before you could spawn on spawn beacons and squad vehicles from anywhere in the map, now you have to be in a certain range, one kilometer I think, to be able to spawn on the sp squad deployables. And I think this is making the squad leader's job so complicated, because sometimes you plant a beacon but people cannot spawn on it because they're too far away. Same when you pull vehicles, squad vehicles, Valkyries, Sanders. It's, uh, it's sometimes hard to get the, the squad to spawn on it, because they're out of spawning range. This had made squad vehicle play much more complicated, so I hope this will be fixed to make squad vehicle play more friendly and less of a headache. So the next point is about communication. There is a small problem that when you are in the map screen, you don't see the names of the people talking, like you see them on your HUD when you play. I think the name should appear on the map screen too, so you know who's talking. For now on the map screen, you have to guess who's talking according to their voice, so you, when you're in a public squad, it's quite impossible to do. They're coming big stairs again. So the next point is also about communication. I think it's one of the strengths of uh, Blindside 2, is the, are the voice channels. It's so epic when you hear people talk in the prox chat. Uh, sometimes it's annoying when, because they play uh, crappy music, but when they give orders or, uh, or just cheer for each other, it's amazing. So I think this should be encouraged. Just by telling people how to do this, like you get info bubbles to know which key to use your ability, maybe you should have info bubbles to know which key to use for the prox chat, for the squad chat, for the platoon chat, etc. So the next point is about synergy between classes. I think we should have more options to buff your friendly players. Maybe the engineer could be able to overload personal shields of infantry. So it could buff it to like a plus 50% or plus 30%. Like the, like the medics could be able to buff a player's health, like by 30% or 50%. This was a big part of team play in Team Fortress 2, where medics could overheal people before a breach, for example, to prepare them to take damage and to, and to give them a higher chance of survival. I'm pretty sure this could work very well in Planetside 2, with medics buffing the health or engineers buffing the shields. Thanks. So the next point is also about synergy. For now we have mostly synergy tools for camping, like the medic bubble shield, speedfire turrets, the deployable wall. This is mostly used for holding positions, but it's not very useful when you want to attack bases. I think the tool that will have the most impact is a deployable jumper that could allow you to bypass a wall or get in a building. This will allow players to bypass choke points, which is a huge part of Blindside 2. Like I already said, the ability to deploy terminals would be very interesting when attacking bases. So please, more deployable jumpers, deployable terminals, deployable spawns. The same thing applies to the construction system. We mostly have buildings to defend the base and camp, but we don't have many constructibles to attack bases. For example, a constructible jumper combined with an Elysium spawn tube would make a fantastic way to attack a base, Without a sander, you can uh, make people spawn in your base and give them the ability to jump to the base you want to attack. This would be very funny and interesting, and it will surely motivate people to attack the constructible bases. 
So the next point is about the vehicle team play. I already, I already said it many times. I would like that there is an ammo count for the driver, so you know exactly how much how much ammo your gunner has. For now, you have a, an indicator that's not very precise. I would also like to see the hit markers of the gunner, so you can know if he's hitting the targets or not. This is a crucial information when you're driving to know if you need to chase a target or fall back. Also, if you don't know your gunner, it would be a nice way to know if he's doing well or not. For now, you have to rely on the visual cues and it's not always reliable. So the next point is to improve the competitivity uh, between outfits. I would like that there is a top 3 outfit leaderboard at every base capture or defense. For now, it only displays the dominant outfit when you capture a base. But I think that the top 3 would be more interesting and same thing when you defend the bases. Next point is also about competitivity, uh, and, it, and it has already been suggested many times, is an outfit leaderboard. Each time a continent caps or an alert ends, so we can know which outfit did the best. For example, the most kills, the most thunders destroyed, the most thunders deployed, base captures, base defenses, thunder spawns, etc. So the next point is about the construction system. I think we should be able to build non-hives closer to the normal bases, like towers, walls, so there is actually a tactical advantage to build apart from building bases and refining corsium. This could impact the normal bases and motivate and motivate people to build more and attack bases instead of ignoring them. So the next point is about the waypoints that you have to place and update very often when you're squad leading. I think we should be able to place them much easier. It's already a good step that we can put it directly on the minimap, but this could be even more user friendly, like for example with the double click or even with the comma rows directly by aiming where you want the waypoint. So the next point is to allow more team play between the air and the ground. I think the squad leaders and platoon leaders should be able to call air strikes or air support in a particular area and this will give a mission to nearby pilots to kill enemies where it's really needed and get extra bonus points. So the next point is not really tied to the leadership system but this could help the team play between players a lot even without squads or platoon. I think players deploying spawns should be rewarded much more for example, deploying a sender in an enemy territory, uh, an extra bonus if it's the only sender there, anything that could create fights. And the last point is a little bit personal, and it's, uh, and it's about the battle bus, the battle sender that I used to run a lot with my squads. If you equipped blockade armor, the sender used to have an extra resistance from the back, and it could make it able to take much more damage with the counterpart of driving slower. And I think it was a fantastic technique to push the front line and push vehicle choke points, I have many videos showing how fun it was and how it promoted teamwork because the sender doesn't do a lot of damage but it could cover the advance of other players and vehicles. Now blockade armor has been nerfed and the damage resistance is the same from all sides which completely killed this technique and the synergy that came with it. And I think this is very sad. The, the sender is one of the most versatile vehicles for squads and I really like that you could use it in so many different ways now it's mostly hiding behind rocks, waiting to get destroyed. So I hope this technique could be brought back. So that's it guys, thanks for hanging out uh, for so long. I know this is a very long list, but I had to get this off my chest, because it has been bothering me since years that now that I have an outfit and that I have to squad lead. So if you agree with this list, please upvote the thread on Reddit, and I'll also post it on the Planeside 2 forum. And if you have any suggestions to improve the leadership system, please post them below. I'm curious to know any idea you might have. Thanks Daybreak for the amazing game and keep improving please. <laughs> Stay epic! Bye bye guys! Awesome! Oh my god.
Awesome push guys, I never saw that. Alright, I'm gonna paint the beacon here. Let's try to take this space. And good job for the push, it was awesome. And it's recorded.